Good morning, kids, and welcome to Karen Reed. I'm sitting here again in my South Berwick living room, and today I have another book that I just adore. This book is one of my favorites, and uh, has been for years. Painting the Wind, about Van Gogh, the Dutch painter who really lived and really painted, so this is in many ways a true story. Uh, not verbatim, but um, quite a bit. Okay. Um, it's written by Michelle Dianetti, and one of the cool things about this book is that I know her. And she's a lovely person. And she um, spoke a few years ago at Berwick Elementary School. And I happened to be in the audience. And I loved what she told the children. Because she said, you know, you can be whatever you want to be. You can do in life whatever you want to do. If you're just willing to practice. And that's what she did. She practiced writing children's books until she got this one published. And uh, the illustrator is Kevin Hawks. Maybe you remember his name. Um, he did the book, My Little Sister Ate One Hair, that we read together. He's done over ch uh, 50 children's books. He's known for his vibrant colors and his sense of humor. And I think you'll like the way he illustrated Michelle's story. Okay, about Vincent van Gogh, the painter who lived in France a few hundred years ago. All right, here we go. In 1888, when horses drew wagons through the stone street, Claudine lived in the city of Arras in the south of France. The streets of Arras were built narrow and crooked to keep out the blazing sun, but nothing could keep out the wind, the maestral, they called it, and it blew then, as it does now, as though it were made of rage. Claudine was the last child of many, and all in her family worked, for times were poor. Her father worked on the barges on the river Rhone. Her brothers and sisters worked in the orchards and farms in the country surrounding Arles. Claudine wished to be outside, too, wished where she could lift up her face to the wind and the sun. But for now, she worked indoors with her mother, cleaning other people's houses. One morning, Maman, that's what Claudine called her mother, led Claudine past the ancient Roman arena where crowds roared at the bullfights every Sunday. Claudine longed to climb its three arched tiers. From the top, she could see over the jumble of red tile roofs to the green and blue countryside and the yellow sky that hung over all. But my mom, my mom had a new house to clean and she hurried Claudine through the narrow streets to the river Rhone where it cooked like an elbow at La Place Lamartine. There's Claudine hurrying along with her mother who she called my man. In the yellow house on the Place Lamartine lived a painter. His neighbors called him Vincent. The children called him Fu Ru, red-headed fool, because of his red gold hair and because he painted outside even on days when the sun was blistering hot, even on days when the maestro 
made the trees bend sideways and blew chimneys from the roofs. Stay out of the painter's way, whispered Maman. He is crazy. The maestro has blown away his mind. And so Claudine kept quiet as a mouse while she scrubbed the red tile floors. The yellow house smelled of oil paints. Canvases leaned on all the walls. And while Claudine worked, she looked her fill. Vincent's paintings did not look like other paintings, neat and perfect. They were thick and wild. Bright suns curled in spangled light. Sunflowers blared like little trumpets. So beautiful, Maman, she whispered. But Maman muttered under her breath about crazy men who called themselves artists. When Vincent came in with a painting under his arm, his shirt sleeves smeared with yellow, Maman sent Claudine outside to wash the front step. As they walked home from the yellow house, the man told Claudine she must always work hard and not be foolish like the painter. Yes, the man said Claudine dreamily. She was only half listening. Something was happening to her eyes. The trees no longer looked green to her, but gold and purple and orange and blue and their branches danced like flames. Vincent is helping her see a new way to look at things. The people of Arda worked hard, but at night they stopped, and on Sundays they rested. Claudine wondered if Vincent ever rested. She found him painting in the ancient Roman graveyard. She spied him painting by the quay. She discovered him at the river where she and Manan did the family washing, painting the women at work. His women were hunched like turtles. His river was a flowing blue curve. The sky he made was green and over it a yellow sun spun in circles. Claudine stood behind Vincent watching until she hungered to make a painting too. She ran to my man's side and took up one of Papa's shirts. She swirled it round and round in the cold water, turning it like Vincent's son. At home, Claudine thought of the drawings she'd seen in the other house. She wanted to make drawings like that, where the sky was not an empty space, but full of clouds and birds wheeling. She took charred wood from the fireplace and bent to draw on the stone floor. She tried to draw trees with strong black marks like Vincent's. She tried to make the branches bend and the leaves take flight, but she felt clumsy, the charcoal smudged. She could not make a tree come alive at all. All through the harvest, Claudine walked around new wet canvases at the yellow house. While men and women gathered fruit and grain, Vincent's crop of paintings grew and grew. When the sun burned down red, setting fire to the red dial roofs, Vincent painted the sky red with color straight from his tubes. When the sun burned down yellow, he painted the sun, the sky, the fields yellow. When the maestro blew, blew Vincent tied his easel to the ground with rope 
to keep his canvas from blowing over. When rain drove down and drove him inside, still he painted sunflowers, boots, his food before he ate it. Like the wind, he was driven. Let me just get a sip. I saw Fu Wu at the orchard today, said one of Claudine's brothers at dinner. He was painting the olive trees purple. Claudine let the others laugh. Perhaps she would see the purple trees leaning against a wall in the yellow house. They say he paints at night, said one of her sisters. Yes, I have seen him, said Papa, with a straw hat on his head and burning candles in the brim. He claims to paint by the candlelight. The wind has blown away his mind. The wind said my man or the liquor he drinks. Claudine remembered Vincent's painting of the night cafe, the blues and oranges, the strange people silent and dark. She wished she could make paintings that could talk without words, as Vincent did. She wished she could make a painting of Vincent's that would show her family what she saw inside of him. In October, Vincent covered the inside walls of the yellow house with a new coat of whitewash. We make, have to make the house ready, he cried. My friend Paul is coming to stay. When Claudine went upstairs to sweep, she saw that the spare room was newly whitewashed and paintings of sunflowers were hung on the walls. In Vincent's room, the bed and chairs were painted the color of butter and the windowsills were painted green. A bright red cloth covered the bed and a blue basin stood on the orange table. A crazy room, muttered my man. It gives me a headache. But Claudine thought she would love a room like Vincent's, bright as summer. Soon there was another painter at the Yellow House. His name was Paul. Eagerly, Claudine followed the painters to an orchard one noon. They set up their easels near the apple trees and began to paint. Soon she saw that Paul also used vivid colors, though his were deep rather than bright. Vincent's colors were shouts and Paul's were singing voices. Not like that, cried Vincent when he looked at Paul's work. You miss the violet shadow there. Am I not right, my young friend? He called over to Claudine. Claudine saw Vincent's violet in the tree's shadow. Paul had painted his shadow blue, and she thought she saw that too. Then she saw her own color. It's purple, she said, with red mixed in. But neither man heard her. They were arguing angrily about which of them was right. On Christmas Day, the bells rang all over Arve while her family prepared for church. Claudine ran outside to feed bread to the pigeon, whose song filled the courtyard. Coo-roo, sang the pigeons. Coo-roo, coo-roo. Claudine scattered the crumbs 
and watch the sun paint the buildings gold. After mass, Claudine and her family strolled through Alaro to greet their friends. Or friends. Horses drew wagons through the street. Happy shouts filled the air. A crowd of people thronged the square in front of the yellow house. Their shrill voices f frightened Claudine. Had something happened to Vincent? She pushed through them. Is something wrong, she cried. They have taken Fru Ru away, the people replied. Fru Ru and his friend had a fight, and Vincent cut off the lobe of his own ear. For many weeks, Claudine did not go to the yellow house. No one was there. Dust gathered inside. His neighbors were glad that Vincent was gone, but Claudine was not glad. She worked with the man day after day and wished the sun could give off more light. At the close of winter, the painter finally returned to the yellow house. Claudine and my man returned too to clean. Claudine thought sadly that Vincent seemed tired. The joy had gone from his eyes. He could not bring himself to paint, but slumped at the window, gazing across the place Lamartine. One day while she scrubbed, Claudine heard shouting. Fru Ru, Fru Ru, cried the children, chanting over and over. Claudine looked up in dismay. Would they never leave Vincent alone? Vincent opened the window and yelled, but the children kept chanting. Fru Ru, Fru Ru. Heard and enraged, Vincent threw his chair out the window then some paintings. Oh no, cried Claudine. She grabbed the painter's arm. The young people scattered. Adults ran from the nearby cafe, shouting their fists and shouting up at Vincent. My man pushed Cla Claudine out of the yellow house. Under the feet of angry men, Claudine found a small painting of Vincent's two battered shoes. She set it carefully out of harm's way. Come away from there, said my man. Those men were not fair to Vincent, said Claudine boldly. She felt her face grow hot. You are as foolish as that painter, scolded my man. But Claudine could not keep still. The boys were mean, she said. They called him names. What of it, said my man. A man does not care if children call him names. But Claudine thought that anyone would care. Vincent's neighbors had become afraid of him. They signed a petition to ban him from living in the yellow house. The magistrate granted their request. When the time came for Vincent to leave, the neighbors gathered to watch and gossip. Claudine did not want to stand with them. She pushed through the whispering crowd and knocked on the door of the yellow house. The crowd quieted. The door opened a crack. Well, said Vincent, his eyes were sad. I came to tell you, I like your paintings said Claudine loudly. A tiny light came into Vincent's eyes. Do not tell the others, he joked, or they will make you leave too. 
He handed Claudine a small painting. Sunflowers blazed from it in curls of light. For you, he said. Claudine hugged the painting and ran home. She understood that Vincent had said goodbye and she clenched her teeth to keep from crying. But in her heart, she felt glad. She felt as strong as the sun, as fierce as the maestro. Vincent had given her the eyes to see the heart of a sunflower, brave and bold and filled with fire. I love my friend's book. It's excellent. Okay, uh, I hope you enjoyed it too. And I'll see you next time on Carmen Reed. Okay, it's always good to hang out with you. Bye-bye.